Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. Hello, everybody. Thursday after St. Patrick's Day in a normal world. Today, it's a it's a head, headache day in Ireland, but because we are on lockdown, I don't know, just some people are with headache right now. So yesterday we had the St. Some, some Patrick's Day is a big celebration here in Ireland. Unfortunately, this is the second year in a row we celebrate St. Patrick's Day at home without any parade or any other kind of uh, agglomeration. But it is what it is. We have to deal with that. So thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you, Kaka. Good to see you. And our friends from Ireland, SSI volunteers, thank you very much for being here with us, for your time. Thanks, for friends from the UK, from Brazil, and from America. I know we are a kind of late for our usual time, but as I explained last Tuesday, uh, America just changed their clock for the daylight savings time last Sunday, and Ireland will change um, and Chicago. Yeah, Don, Chicago is here as well. Yeah, and Ireland will change. Uh, we change our clock on that. Uh, on, on, uh, not the Sunday, the following Sunday, twenty eighth. So, uh, for this week and next week, we'll be kind of uh, an hour late compared to our usual time when we have our lives. Okay. So, saying that, uh, today's talk is motor perfection. I know this is a, a trick subject, but I personally love to talk about it. It means I need to change a lot of my behavior. My, I need to work with my myself. I need to work with myself. And today we have Samantha with us. She's back for a long holiday. She, she's not exactly a holiday, married. but. Oh, it is. Come on. Come on. And you went to see mom, daddy, you know. You know, spend time with them. Good. Have you, good to have you back here with us. And um, just get ready because work to come. And we need to, to do our job here. I'm glad you are okay. back. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Okay. Okay. So uh, in order to, to start, um, let me do the initial prayer and some of you do the final prayer. Okay. Let's, let's raise up our thoughts, make connection with superior spirits with the mentors of, of this program, mentors of Kardec Radio, mentors of SSI. Let's ask them to calm us down. Giving us Ability to, to overcome obstacles, to reinvent ourselves, to adapt ourselves. At the same time, we are asking to these good vibrations be extended to our brothers and sisters who are in hospitals who are at home, suffering from anxiety, loneliness, no hope, no faith, thinking about suicide. Let 
so be it. Amen. Okay, okie dokie. So, moral perfection. So, Sa, it's, it's you, my dear. Push, push the train and I go after you. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I just want to start saying it's a very challenging topic to, to talk about because, um, well, from from one side, it's good because I, I I personally learned a lot when I was preparing for for this talk, um, and there are a few things that kind of the way um, things were exposed, where I you know got the the, the information from, was um, kind of mind blowing um, for me. Maybe for you that are uh, listening to us, maybe you're gonna think it's like you already knew that, but um, but to me it was kind of a new way of thinking about um, some things. So it was very interesting, um, but from um, another side, it's, it's always challenging because you're talking about stuff that you know you need to work on yourself. And like when we talk about moral perfection, um, it doesn't mean at all <laughs> that we know more than other people. It just means that we prepared um, a little bit before um, it, being here. So perhaps we have some information to share and from that we can talk about it. So just want to kind of uh, have an open conversation about it and, um, and, just, um, and just say, how much challenging it it also is well for me personally as well and when we talk about more perfection there's a chapter in the spirits book um part three chapter 12 about more perfection and there are a, a few questions there that helps us understand um what it is exactly and how we can go about having it right so and um, i just wanted to start with the first question there which is question 893 and the question is which is the most meritorious of all the virtues so before we start anything i think it's important to understand what a virtue is right so a virtue is um from the dictionary is a behavior showing high moral standards. So basically, it is moral excellence. A virtue is a trait or quality that is deemed to be morally good and thus is valued as a foundation of principle and good moral being. So personal virtues are, are characteristics valued as promoting collective and individual greatness. Basically, it's improving or having this good quality that will improve your life and improve the life of others and it will help on our evolution and the answer from the spirits and um, so again the question which is the moral meritorious of all the virtues so which one is the most meritorious they say all virtues are meritorious because all are signs of progress on the path of good there is always virtue when there is voluntary resistance to the allure of wrongful tendencies however the highest virtue consists in the sacrifice of one's own interests for the good of one's neighbor without ulterior motives the greatest merit is that which is based on the most dis disinterested charity. So, it's a it, it, the answer is very complete, um, and I just wanted to break it down a little bit so we can understand all the um, the the let's say the all the important bits of it. Right, so the first one is 
over to some meritorious because all are signs of progress on the path of good. So no matter what you're doing, you know, if it's good, you're already helping. So it could be that you're helping um, a charity or that you are taking care of your family or, you know, that you have faith in God or, you know, it doesn't really matter what. All of them are equally good because they help you or us in our um, path of good and help us to progress. But if we go to chapter 17, be perfect in the gospel according to spiritism, it's basically, um, it's the whole item tree there is, is kind of a guide of what would be um, or what are the things that we need to do uh, in our path of moral perfection? And basically what says there is that you have to question your own conscience, have faith in God, have faith in the future, know all vicissitudes, sorrows and disappointments of life are trials and expiations, do good for its own sake without expecting anything in return, Sacrifice your own interests to the interests of justice. Find happiness in providing happiness. Um, be kind, humane, benevolent. Um, being the indulgent towards others' weaknesses. And respect, respect other convictions and rights. In the same way you would like or would wish they, uh, your own um convictions and rights to be respected and there are other things as well i'm, I'm just trying to pick some of the ones that i uh, remember um better so truly moral persons are those who practice the law of justice love and charity in its greatest purity now it's not we know all of that and it's a, it's it's a big task for us because we are in we are being developed we are in our path um of perfection and in development so knowing is already good but what else then if we go back to the to the answer the spirits say 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 there is always virtue when there is voluntary resistance to the allure of wrongful tendencies so two words stand out for me here one of them is resistance and the other one is voluntary they, they say voluntary resistance so if we um if we go to item four in the same chapter uh, in the gospel according to spiritism chapter 12 be perfect and um, we see that it's written there, true spirits or spiritists are recognized by their moral transformation and the efforts they make to overcome their evil inclinations. So here it explicitly says the efforts they make to overcome their evil inclinations. So from this small phrase, we can see that we need to acknowledge that we are in the process, you know, and that we, if we already do uh, the efforts to overcome our evil inclinations, it's already like an enormous job and will help a lot. So moral transformation is a process, right? And the effort we make is really important and it's what's going to get us there. But then if we see what Leon Denis says in one of his books, I don't recall exactly the name, but he says that when our acts are good, but our thoughts are bad, there is a false interpretation of the good deed done, which means that the act that we performed is dissociated from the will. So therefore, it's not truly an act of kindness. It could be good for the person that is receiving it, and no question about it, but maybe it won't work on your favor that much because your intention was not that good. 
right? So again, going back to the words, um, resistance, which is the effort that we make um, to overcome our evil, uh, our evil inclinations, and then voluntary. Voluntary here has to do with will, has to do with the this desire from within to do something nice, to, 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 to do something good, to improve as a person, as a citizen, and as, as a spirit, right? And then we go to the last phrase of this answer, which is, however, the highest virtue consists in the sacrifice of one's own interests for the good of one's neighbor without ulterior motives. The greatest merit is that which is based on the most disinterested charity. So this part is really interesting. And if we go a little bit beyond that, we can see in question 912, what is the most effective means of fighting the predominance of the corporeal nature? And then the answer from the spirits is practicing self-denial. So self-denial or abnegation is the is the ability to do something for the other person without thinking about yourself when you're doing it you're completely focused on the other person or what you're doing specifically you have no agenda there right and sometimes it also has to do with the fact that you forget your own like you're not really measuring the benefits that you're getting from there that is not your that is not your drive that's not why you're doing it and it could even be in certain situations what you're doing could be against you um when i say against i mean say for for instance you have just received some some amount of money and then you decide to give that money to i don't know someone else or you want to help a charity or something so you don't have that money anymore right you could do a lot of things with the money but even though you don't you won't have that money anymore you still want to give it you know without focusing on the fact that you don't have it anymore so um that is kind of what explains um this last phrase here um I have other questions here from the book that I would like to talk about, um, Stephen. But do you want to comment on anything that I that I just said? Yeah. Well, you said perfectly. I, I you didn't laugh anything to me, but <sighs> moral perfection. This is something we always think we are okay. We. I love that sentence you said, we, we, not you said, uh, Kardec said, you recognize a, a, a true spirit is do the efforts. I want to emphasize these efforts. Efforts is not accomplished. Effort is something you are preparing you to complete it. So what I'm saying is, do not be too hard with yourself. So let's say if you recognize you need to work like, I don't know, prideful in your life. Okay. The good point is you are you, you already identify it. Okay. So I need to work my prideful. I don't like this. I need to, to work it. Okay. Great. Point number one. Point number two is establish small steps. Don't try, oh, I will wake up tomorrow and I won't be prideful anymore. You will fail. So you will fail. So you need to give you little treats and encouragements in order to resolve this prideful uh, problem. Perhaps you will not accomplish the mission is, is still in this life, but the good point is you already did the first step. You're already trying to work in it. 
okay? And if you are one of that kind of person, oh, I need to work pride for selfishness, you have a long list, try to work with the easiest one. You know? So the main idea is go smoothly, but work hard on it. No, this is this is my the, about moral perfection. When you think about moral perfection, and um, we we need to do we need to do good. We know, okay. We need to, to do things. Need to work our goodness. We need to do good to to the others. Um, That is a that is a quote from Kant. Kant is a is a philosopher, and he has his own view. He has his interpretation about the golden rule. The golden rule is do to the others what would like them do to you. Okay, yeah. So this is what this is the golden rule. So Kant says you need to do the good as long as this good is in benefit of you and the people who are surrounding you. If you are doing something, even though it's good, but will harm someone, will harm your neighbor, it doesn't, it doesn't apply. So, see, he's not the spiritist, but he had this feeling in order to say, A, the good is beyond what we are talking here. Is something collective. Is respecting someone's boundaries. Is at the same time, I will do good because I want my neighbors be okay. If my neighbors are okay, I will be fine. And this will change completely the society. This, this, this. When we reach that level. Then I will say we are in regeneration. But right now, especially now with the news we have our days, I don't see doing good collectively. We still have problems in practicing the social distance. So I'm not judging here if Corona, if COVID is right, wrong. I'm not, I'm not jumping on that. I'm just saying practicing here the social distance. Avoid agglomeration, avoid parties, avoid big reunions. And we can see in newspapers, uh, 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 journals, uh, there is a lot of people not practicing this simple thing, which is keep distance keep apart two meters or six feet from each other. So why are we still having problem to keep six feet or two meters apart from each other? I don't think we are ready for a regenerated world. We will reach it for sure. Prog Two things in life, we already said it here, two things in life is certainty. You're going to die, and the law of progress will happen. If you believe, if you don't believe, if you want, if you don't want, both will going to happen. And let's see, there's some Robbie Brown say here, um, it all began to change for me when I recognized my selfishness and prideful traits. Traits. Bobby, if you identify this, my friend, thumbs up for you. It, it, this is a big step because we recognize we need to work this. So once we recognize it, it means, my friend, you are on the right track. Also, he says, uh, self-awareness for me 
is the foundation to inner transformation. Okay, no comment here. I agree 100% with you. But the trick thing here, what Samantha and I, I try to emphasize is how to give your first steps in order to, to be aware, not be, I don't want to be redundant here, in order to recognize your self-awareness. Why do you need to work? Why do you need to think with yourself, with you and your pillow at night and say, okay, I need to do good for myself and I need to work this, that, or this. No, so that's my introductory two cents. I know it's a bit long, but yeah. And 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 some some other do you, do you think it's why is so difficult to identify? Like you 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 had a some experience in the HR and when uh, you are in, a, in an interview process when when the interviewer asks oh what's your strengths sometimes you need to say to the guy okay okay I got it I got it it's fine great he give you the the, 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 the the candidate give you so many examples you know but when you jump to what is your weaknesses you have, with luck, one example. Or a lot of people say, uh, mm, eh, uh, so why is too difficult to talk about our, our um, weaknesses, our problems, our difficulties? Well, do you want me to answer that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, give me your two cents, please. Well, that is my personal opinion, right? Because there's nothing specifically in literature that I can remember that would explain that. But and it's really hard for us to accept our difficulties, our our weaknesses. So the first. The first thing is we would deny even to ourselves that we have that because dealing with it is difficult. Um, it's difficult in, 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 in relation to our relationships, you know, in relation to our self-image, in relation to our um, own beliefs because we, we want to believe that we can do a lot of things that sometimes... We need to be more realistic about, um, but we are human. I think this machine that we have, that is our body, is impressive in so many ways. Um, and the more I, the more I, the more I read about how our body works and all the how how this whole engine works, you know. Um, and not that I am like a scientific person or anything like that, but I like reading articles about it and things like that. Um, the more I learn about it, the more I think, um, the more I believe in, in this spiritist doctrine. And, and I, and I understand that there's a God behind it. You know, there's a, there's a, like a huge power behind this thing that creates it and it creates it in a way that everything makes so much sense so much sense so for example so i was reading this article about meditation and how meditation is good for for your health and but not in a very like i was reading an article that was explaining the the how meditation affects your brain Right. So it creates this gray area. It, 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 it expands it. So you have more gray area, which means that it's like when you go to the gym and you do the exercise, your muscles get harder. Um, so you have this stiffness and, you know, this 
like it's it's all it's like it's beautiful and functional and strong and so that's the same thing that happens to your um, brain when you do meditation and one of the things that it does for you uh, uh, um, beyond that is that there's an area and it's already proven in science that in your brain some areas that they call network um what's the name it's a um, default network something like this so your brain has the capacity of wondering all the time so you wonder all the time all the time which means that you have difficulty to focus a lot of times when you're doing a lot of things so when you're working when you're eating you want you are you know in this mind right. of yours thinking about stuff and you can like they did studies with people that they gave them a task and they said to them do that like as fast as you as you can so people had to concentrate and do the task immediately after they did it they went to this network default network so your brain goes back to that wandering process very fast. And that's your nature, right? That's your nature. So what it said to me, like what I thought about when I was reading it is like you do exercises and you have to do meditation to create this um, better um, use of your brain, right. but not naturally, and what you what your body would do is the opposite really? so we have this constant struggle you know you have to exercise all the time so it has the ability to do so much good stuff but at the same time you have to work for it to happen because it's like it, it won't be given to you it won't be given to you. It needs to be your merit to to do the stuff that will be good for you. So that I know it's kind of very abstract, and that like I I think I went too far with my thoughts when I read this article that was just about the power of meditation. But I could see God there working there. You know, I could see, and it's so amazing. Like everything works in a way that it should work. And it's it's for your own benefit. You were understanding it or not, it's for your own benefit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I'm saying we we said it, it was, you said about Leon Denis when you say when you're you you're acting but your thoughts are not there. So is 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 effortless and i'm saying it's still effortless when you act just because everybody's doing like you are not there so sometimes is is better you listen someone than perhaps give you a, a donation of one million dollars just because all rich people do, do this you know what I mean? So the first step is let's be there. We need it, and this be there. It's it's the starting point for gain faith, but faith in you, not the religious faith. Faith in you, the ability your ability to do something to someone and even though yourself and I, I i'm saying a lot of people who works in these non non-governmental uh, uh, organizations if you i i i don't know if i read it is in a research or it was an interview but the point is uh if you ask to them what they what they are feeling, what they think about it. Instead of say, oh, I'm helping people, they say, they are helping me. I came here to help them, 
but at the end, I was the one who were who was helped. Yeah, like, and you uh, know about that that you're saying. Um, I I read an article that was very interesting as well. So when you do good things for the people, so scientists have um, did some studies, and they what they found was that the parts of your brain that kind of um, works when when you see like you do something good for somebody and you see the benefits that you're giving to them and how happy they are it's the same as when you consume cocaine for example it's the same excitement Not really. in your brain so see again like it just it's it's just science science proving and um, how important and how good it is to do good good things not only for the person that is receiving it but for your for yourself as well so it makes you happy in other words it makes you happy and excited and you know it's it's just this it's like when you um what what's the when you do exercise and you have this peak of endorphin you know this feeling of happiness and that's why without cherish it there's no salvation because we will find our happiness helping helping other people yeah yeah you feel the pleasure of doing this and you guys do you have any questions tell me about do you work in a kind of uh, non-governmental uh, organization uh, let us know your opinion i don't know uh, much about you guys so let me know if our saying here makes sense at the same time uh, the model perfection we need to work ourselves in terms of being anxiety because we think we're gonna sort out the problem like this we think oh i, I i'm preparing my model perfection and then we, we want the results straight away instead of thinking in a in a in a long time we act but we want the results straight away otherwise otherwise this kind of dismotivate ourselves so at the end everything is connected with you you are the beginning of everything you are the most important person you need to work and we need to help and we need to help the others how we can help be an example start to research of practice this i'm pretty sure when you instead of replying a lot or jumping conversations you stay quiet just listen so when you exercise uh, listen more and talk less for example people will will say hey what's wrong you know Rob is saying here um I want you to earn what I receive. Well, Orby, yeah. I, I I would say is we can we can have what 
We can earn what we receive as long as you have the merits for that. And my question is, are you doing the merits in order to, to receive what we're expecting for? Or are you acting just to receive what you're looking for? No, I... Uh, also, once once I was I was uh, preparing myself for this this conversation here with Samantha, uh, I heard an example from a famous uh, speaker, a spiritual speaker in Brazil, and he said, "We need to do goodness without counting it, like." Um, if I ask you, uh, um, how many, uh, Samantha, how many times did you blink your eyes today? And of course, Samantha, you say no, I don't know. Or <laughs> how many times you, 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 you breathe today? She, she also don't know. But how many times uh, did you do any good thing today? Most of the case we say no, but sometimes we say one, two, three. So why are we still counting how many times we did a good deed? We have a problem. We need to do good deeds as the same way, in the same pace as we are blinking, blinking our eyes. I think you heard that example as well, Samantha. You're on mute. You're on mute. mute. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I I I heard that example as well, and it's uh, it actually brings me to this um, question eight hundred and ninety four from the Spirit's book that asks. There are persons who do good through a spontaneous impulse without having to struggle, struggle with any contrary sentiment. Do they deserve the same merit as those who have to struggle against their own nature and who manage to overcome it? And the answer from the spirit was, those who do not have to struggle have already made progress. They struggled and triumphed, triumphed in the past. That is why good sentiments cost them no effort and their actions seem so easy. Doing good has become a habit for them. They should be honored as old warriors who have earned their rank. Since you are still far from per perfection, such examples surprise you by their contrast and you admire them so much because they are rare. However, you must know that on worlds more advanced than yours, what is the exception among you has become the rule. The sentiment of the good is spontaneous everywhere on those worlds because they are inhabited only by good spirits. And a single bad intention would be a monstrous exception. That is why humans are so happy there. The same will occur, occur on the earth when humanity transforms itself and when it understands and practices charity in its true meaning so basically it's exactly what they say here is exactly what you're saying which is they don't count what they do they just do it automatically you know they they don't even know they are doing it because they the, like it, it's not it's not it's it it doesn't even it's so natural and it's so standard that they don't they don't even think about it. It's like yeah. blinking our eyes or, or breathing or you know uh, doing all like walking or doing all the things that we do without even um, realizing we are doing them because it's 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 automatic yeah. and you won't do the opposite as well because you do that. You know, so it makes so much sense for you to do the good that you don't do the bad stuff. You know, it doesn't, it, it just doesn't make sense to you to do this. 
to do it. And I, I think a good example would be, you know, you know, for example, I'm not saying everybody does that, um, but I think it's very common still because I see it, um, and I did it as well in the past. Now I try to be more self-aware, but. For example, if you go to the supermarket and if you buy something and the cashier give you the wrong um, change, of course, if it's less than you were expecting, you would complain. But if it's more, you know, the majority of the times you wouldn't give them back the money, right? And some people would do it. And if you see someone doing it, you would say, oh, you're so stupid. You shouldn't have done that. It's just, it's bad for them. Like they did it. So they, they were they were not paying attention they should pay more attention you know or something like this so we kind of justify the wrong we did by the fact that they didn't do their job well you know so you sh you, sh you should just give the money back and it's a still it's not understood as so simple like that yet by us so as, again, I'm not saying everybody does that. What I'm, uh, it's, it, I'm just trying to um, show something that is more tangible, um, just to show our situation. So that's why when we do good, we still count the goods that we do because it doesn't doesn't come naturally yet. Um, yet. So maybe, yeah. 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 So we'll get there. Oh, we will. We will. We're yeah. gonna get there. So one of the, later, one, we'll get there. Yeah. Well, that's the law. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So one of the things that I heard in that video that you mentioned, that is actually from um, Simon Pedro, is that he was um, he mentioned the the passage in the Bible in Matthew. Um, I think it's oh, yeah. verse six, item one, two, three, four, four some, some, yeah, six, something one, like this. Yeah. So, um, it's it's from the New Testament and it's a uh, part of the Sermon of the Mountain. And um, what it says is something along along the lines, and I don't have the the Bible with me, but it it'll be something along the lines. And um, be careful that you don't do your charitable giving before men, to be seen by them, or else you have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Therefore, when you do merciful deeds, don't sound a trumpet before yourself, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may get glory from men most certainly i tell you they have received their reward but when you do merciful deeds don't let your left hand know what your right hand does so that your merciful deeds may be in secret then your father who sees in secret will reward you openly and the thing that kind of blew, blew my mind here was that I always thought about, because we talk about not like, I understood not, uh, do not let your left hand know what your right hand right do. Hand, yeah. I always under, understood it is like, if you do something good, you don't need to grab about it. You don't need to mm -hmm. show you did it. Um. But then he points out that the the left hand and the right hand is of the same person, right? So it's not about another person, it's about yourself. So it's about doing good without thinking even for yourself, like I am a good person because I did it, you know? So this is exactly what you were saying, like we are counting even yeah even in our own minds to justify how good we are or to be or to accept ourselves i don't know so what actually Matthew meant here was your left hand uh, your left hand should not know what your right hand does because you won't 
like even for yourself and count you want even for yourself and grab about it so it's it's very personal um and another thing that he said as well was that in this part they never said you should not show what to do to other people they said you should not show to be praised but we need to show the good stuff we do so we can create this environment so we can and show what is possible and show that people are doing good things so mm -hmm. i always thought we shouldn't show at all but now i understand it's not that i'm going to be like telling everybody everything that i do that is good but something should be said even even if you're not like you're not interested in like you have no hidden agenda no, here. You're, you're not interested in getting the credits or anything like that you just you just you you are saying what was said what was done you know you are you are you are showing the act and not the person so you were set you were showing what was done not the door the doer so you know it's 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 a completely different top um concept and oh, i was like oh that make a lot of sense yeah exactly <laughs> yeah i like that that's it i like this point yeah. yeah oh wow well my friends it's 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 all doing everything starts with us everything starts with our will everything starts in our in our behavior so so i think it's this is it from us today uh we didn't have any any comments here just Merita de Mello saying interesting, very happy to hear this. Okay, thank you, Merita. Uh, thank you for watching us. So let me see who are still here with us. Aka. Linda is here. Rob, I said, thank you, Robbie. Great talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robbie. Yeah, it's, it's, we have a more to explore about this model perfection, but this is what we prepared for today. Um, and we can, we can prepare more things for next, next week. As this topic is long, you know, the model perfection, the spirits books, the, Book three, it's it's so vast, and we need to to go around this. Okay, so um, let's see. Oh, Leah is with us as well. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Don. We'll talk or listen to it again. So thank you guys. You are amazing to be here with us today. And um, thank you very much for your patience, your kindness towards ourselves. Okay, so um, any final uh, final comments, um, Samantha? No, I think you said it all. It's a very big topic and I would recommend um, you guys if you if you if you're interested to read this chapter um from the spirits book again it's chapter 12 more perfection um it has a lot um, more than we talked about we oh, only touched so yeah we only touched in a few things here um and it is really interesting because it answers some of the questions that we have um uh, in terms of how do I go about doing it? You know, like uh, I want to be perfect. Of course I do, but you know, 
what 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 does it take baby steps be there? baby steps yeah yeah so so yeah as you, as you said we we covered as much as we could but still yeah. a lot to so, thank you linda linda say thank you guys great explanation by samantha by by Kardec and by Simon Pedro. I just <laughs> I just copied them, but you know, I, I'm I give them credits. <laughs> yeah. And some scientific articles that I tried that I tried to try explain. to read. Yeah. I yeah. try to explain myself, but <laughs> yeah. Well, this is how we prepare for these talks here. That that that's the proposal of these talks. You just go in something in our life, now our day by day, we not prepare like fancy explanations, everything perfect, you know, to let you guys know, oh wow, these these two people are I may know. We're here talking about what we learned, our interpretation. Uh, yeah. We invite you to, to read more, have your own interpretation, and give you uh, a way to think more about what we are saying here. You know, like we, we, we don't know more than you at all. No, no way. That, that, yeah. That's not, that, you, you cannot imagine how, what, what is the, the backstage to give the top here you know the preparation discussion uh, and so it's so we prepare ourselves uh we're just day, learning yeah one day we don't need to prepare to face you guys i would say wow we we have learned something you know but anyway thank you samantha can you do the final prayer thank you okay thank you sure so let's let's close our eyes and um, if you if you feel comfortable let's raise our thoughts to jesus let's thank our spiritual friends and our mentor for everything that they they have always done to us and they are still doing all the help all the caring inspirations, all the companionship as well, because they never leave us alone. And especially our mentors. So thank you so much to them that is constantly with us, helping us, inspiring us. And we want to raise our thoughts to all of those in need at the moment. May God be with them and help them. And let's be grateful for everything that we have, all the opportunities, everything good that happens to us or that happened to us. We appreciate it. We appreciate everything. So be it. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll see you next Tuesday. Have a nice evening. And for those who stay connected, I'll see you in 45 minutes with the Spiritual Light program. Okay? Thank you very much, guys. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.